Wednesday, May 26th, 1863. I feel strange like today. I am 30 years old this day. Must be quite a woman now, though I don't feel any different than I ever did. I've been a servant 20 years or more, always the lowest kind, but I think different about it now than I did for I knew Massa. He has taught me, though it's been difficult to learn, the beauty in being nothing but a common drudge and to bear being despised by others what don't have to work the same way. I like my life as I lead it, working for others, going to him when I can of a Sunday. I've long resolved in my own mind that for true freedom and independence, there's nothing like being a maid of all work. I've kept my diary of eight years and worn the chain in padlock six. This is the language he understands so well from me. But I'm forgetting my diary. I fetched our butter from the milk shop. Now they've got old books from schools what they tear to wrap it in. I often learn something off the bits about kings and countries and history. I never knew till a year or two ago that the moon was round and the stars are in the same places in the day, only the light of the sun keeps you from seeing them. Massa was surprised that I knew about Columbus. How should I know if I never learnt? I only been to charity school and left it at nine. Last night, Em and I went and heard Fidelio. Before, he sat on my lap and told me I was to hide my hands and be very prim and not speak unless he spoke to me. I laughed at the idea of me being prim. And so the grand gentleman in the lodging house drudge met. If not as equals, at least we wasn't afraid to meet as sweethearts. I fetched the photographs I had done at Mr. Stoddard's as a lady and in my dirt and that. We tried a Magdalene with me stripped down to my shift and in a kneeling posture as if praying. But Mr. S said, take that chain off. And I said, I can't, sir. He said, is it locked? I blushed a bit and said, yes, and I've not got the key. He said, ah, oh, there's some mystery about that then. At the opera, there was a lady sat by us who noticed my coarse hands very much, and she looked at them most contemptuously, but I held them out all the more for her to look at. How shamed ladies be to have hands and arms like mine, and how weak they be to do my work. How slow they walk to what I do with their large hoops and dresses dragging after them more than a yard, I should think and yet they seem to be trotting along as if they was frightened. I think the same about hoops as I do eardrops. If a girl isn't well looking enough without them, she never will be with them. Miss Margaret come down looking like a black cloud. She said, Mary, I don't like seeing your bare arms and those straps, and I don't feel satisfied about your going out free in the evening. All our servants are called Mary, though I tell everyone my name is Hannah. I said, yes, ma'am. She says, I should like to know more of your history. I said, I wish you knew it then, but I cannot tell it, because I don't feel I ought to tell things in love. Indeed, I don't care what people think of me. She says, oh, but persons cannot generally talk like that. I said, if one tried to please persons, it'd be a hard task, so it's best to do what is right in one's own mind. It is hard to be provoked so by one I could crush with one hand, me a great big wench and as strong as I am, but I pity her too.
Before the opera, I went to Massa in my dirt on purpose that he may see how dirty I got. And he was, I think, disgusted and really pitied me. At last he called me to him and showed a license he'd bought, a marriage license for him and me. And he said, doesn't this show how much I love you and what do you say to it? I have nothing to say about it, but I hope he's never sorry for it, nor I. On the omnibus there was a gentleman, looked hard at me a long time, and then he said, you have higher blood in you than you know of, and said he knew it by the sight of my face. He said I was wasting my best days. disappointed and rather hurt by the license. This sort of going on makes me feel so weary and so very sad that I could wish that my sweetheart was a dustbin or coal heaver rather than one so different to me. Still should I ever feel such pleasure with a common working man as I do with Massa? Dearest Massa, I know you have loved me passionately as a servant, and I have loved you without restraint, but we cannot write it all over again. There's two sides to it, the dark and the bright side. You were forced to hide me through fear of the world, and I must live alone or do against my will. I've spent many years loving you and serving you in other folks' kitchens. And though I tell everyone how much I like my servant's life, you know I've suffered enough through it to make me hate the name. Ours is a stolen love. If it was known, it would seem a shame, as if the charm was broken. a mixture of pain and pleasure and after all who in this life is without both i'm yours as i am hannah 